I don't know if an official term for this kind of show exists yet. You know, the kind of show that leans on the charm of a cute girl that does cute things. So for the moment, I'm gonna call this a dumpling show. As a food, a dumpling has potential to have all sorts of kind of fillings in it. Like you can have vegetables to even a variety of meat. And then you have all of that filling wrapped up in a fluffy dough. The filling is the show's uniqueness, but the dough is the cute character that makes it work. Barakamon, however, is not a dumpling show in a traditional sense. What Barakamon is attempting to do is be a show about a serious adult, one who deals with serious adult problems. But that story gets wrapped up in the dumpling dough in a way that's trying to be profound. In that respect, I think it works to a point. That said, there are other facets to the show that I think needed just a little bit more work. And let me see if I can explain why. Ladies, gentlemen, and others, my name is Arcada, and welcome to Glass Reflection. Today, the 2014 anime directed by Misaki Tachibana, produced by Cinema Citrus, and originally written by mangaka Satsuki Yoshino. I give you... Barakamon. Let's jam. Barakamon is about a calligraphy artist named Seishu Honda. After not taking criticism well, he gets moved out into the country to cool his head. Because that's what happens when you try to knock out a judge who bashes your work. You bash him in! Fatality. And this right here is the show's filling. You have an artist who was once quite confident in what he was doing, but now he's in a place out of his element trying to find that mystical being known as... Inspiration. As someone who has a bachelor's degree in fine arts, let me tell you that in most cases, this is a fool's errand. All art is subjective. What one judge might have hated, others might have praised. So if judgment is what you care about, changing for one guy could alienate everyone else. But do you know what judge you should always try to keep happy? Yourself, which is I think where the show was going. Yes, so Honda tried to beat down that one guy, but I think that was because he believed in the man's words. He believed them and agreed with them, much to his dismay. So now, Honda's out on some godforsaken island in the middle of nowhere, trying to find inspiration while surrounded by some snot-nosed children. Focus. I've got to focus. Which brings us to the soft, gooey dough of the series. On the island, Honda meets local middle school tomboy Naru, who is the show's bright bundle of joy. She does bring in a step farther, though, from other dough characters, because her just being on screen does not make her cute. It's her energy, her curious nature, and her light-hearted attitude that makes her a pleasure to watch. She's able to break down that cynical wall that Honda puts up, the one that he uses to show the world that he is a serious artist, when actually he's just as childish as the middle schoolers. One of the downsides, though, was how Naru was almost exclusively utilized for Honda's benefit. Now, I know that's supposed to be her purpose and all, but it also would have been nice to just have her develop a little bit on her own. The root problem is that we don't get any character development from basically anyone until the final episodes, even for Honda. Like, Honda gets introduced to us as a guy that we can relate to. He's the one that overthinks things. He likes his solitude, and a part of him believes that he has life all figured out, even when the universe is trying to tell him otherwise. He is a character that is stuck in a shell of his own thoughts and beliefs. The show happens during a period in his life that is relatable because most of the audience will end up going through their own version of it. It's a time that we need to remind ourselves of the simple pleasures in life. To remind us that being alive can be fun and beautiful. Every episode uses the childish antics of Naru and her friends as a way to make Honda feel more at ease, to allow him to de-stress with the thought that it'll help him become a better artist. Most of these are like life lessons in one form or another. They are things that Honda knows, but he needs that gentle push of a reminder that they exist. The problems with them is that they come off more as lessons for the audience rather than lessons for the characters. It's like there's this invisible status quo that the show always goes back to. One that allows it to continually show similar lessons without having to really explain why. This is something that's much more clear when you end up watching the show 
back to back to back to back to back in short span of time like I did. Most of the episodes start with Honda in the position of an ignorant city artist. He is a fish out of water on this rural backwater island. He'll end up getting caught up in the antics of Naru and friends and then head home with renewed inspiration. But then next episode starts and he's back to being ignorant again. It's kind of an unfortunate downside to the silly antics of a dumpling show. Like you have to have some semblance of a status quo from which all comedy can spew forth. Now, if you watch the series over a longer stretch of time, say an episode a week, this would be a bit harder to notice. Here's another thing, and I want you to ask this question if you've seen the show. What do you really know about Honda? Ignoring for a second that he has an entire spin-off dedicated to his high school life, because we aren't talking about that right now. What does this 12 episode series show us about his life outside the island? Precious little. He is our main character and one who due to his struggles is an extremely relatable one at that, but we don't know much about him because the show isn't about him, is it? It's about the man's struggles and less about the man himself. Which brings me back to the dumpling analogy because dumplings as a food can be enjoyed in bite-sized fashion. But while you can enjoy many of them and call it a meal, I've never really looked at them as something of a main course. And this applies to the show as well. Because this series is about the childish antics of Naru attempting to have fun with their sensei. And when the show attempts to be serious, it kind of falls flat. Thankfully, it doesn't do it that often, which is why I love the crap out of this series, because the childish antics bank up for basically everything. It's not just Naru that contributes to this either, though she is a focal point. The series has a slew of secondary characters who all help with the upbeat comedy and have their own quirks and habits. It makes for a variety of comedy that just works. And like a dumpling, you can just enjoy it for what it is. Barakamon is a series that is funny, it has intriguing characters, and it tries to show us its own way of overcoming the occasional hardships of the artistic mind. It also shows us how much of the original author's experiences were put into this show, how her struggles affected her as an artist, because so much detail is placed in the pure fun that the characters have, so much so that you know that the writer just has a longing for those days, hopes that they might come again. And that is what the focus is. We never learn what makes good or bad calligraphy, despite that being what Honda is trying to figure out for himself. We don't need to learn that to be able to enjoy the same life lessons that he's going through. The show is enjoyable and upbeat and has a lot here that a person can connect with, can empathize with, and enjoy full-heartedly. It has its issues narratively, yes, and its characters, while good for the antics, have little else to define them. Despite that though, I would still recommend this series for you to watch, especially if you ever find yourself in a similar artistic slump and just need a bit of lightheartedness light to brighten your day. At the time of this video, the series has been licensed and is available from Funimation Entertainment for both stream and purchase. And if purchasing is the thing you were thinking about, then you might want to check out WriteStuffAnime.com, who were nice enough to provide a review copy for this video. They are a fine purveyor of anime DVDs, Blu-rays, and other such merchandise for you to enjoy. And you can pick up Barakamon from them, among many others, because if it's in print, they have it. For ultimate anime recommendations, as well as several other dumpling shows, to keep this relevant, we're gonna stick to two 2016 shows, starting with Flying Witch. It's a fluffy series about a young witch in training and her adventures out in the country, which not a lot of people watch, and for that I am truly sad. And second recommendation goes to Sweetness and Lightning, because since I came up with the dumpling analogy, I have done nothing but think about food. And this series is about a young girl and her father learning about the joys of cooking, and that is something from this year that I can scarcely forget. Between those two, you should find something to your liking. Finally, I'd like to thank patrons Nikolai Gray, Joshua Garcia, Jocelyn Atkins, Lurika Adachi, Calhoun Boy, and Victor Akmark, without which I would not be able to produce these videos at the same extent that I would like. And that's it for me. Thank you, gentle viewers, for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, stay frosty.